Justin here with the Atlanta Brick Co. No, I'm Justin with the Atlanta Brick Co. Jillian, who's the real Justin? Guys, this is ridiculous. Justin, this is ridiculous. See, I told you. Mm. You don't know me. Okay, all silliness aside, this is Justin with the Atlanta Brick Co. Me. I'm honored once again to be with Jillian and Kyle. If you haven't noticed, he is my identical twin brother, and he's also the producer and composer, arranger for the original music you hear for us on the channel. So he does all that in a MIDI program, correct? And uh, he can basically do whatever. I, I, I ask him, I want a Batman sounding one. I want a Pirates of the Caribbean sounding one. And he's just like, okay. And, he, and <laughs> I get exactly it. exactly how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It takes him that long about, to right? about, A little longer. <laughs> a little, yeah. little bit longer. So today we're talking about Lego board games. And I forgot my pocket protector and my glasses, but we'll try to still get through the board game. <laughs> Is that a dig? Um, uh, to all of us. It's a loving dig, I think. I really like board games, or at least I thought I did, and then I met these guys. They love board games. Jillian has been playing and collecting the Lego board games for a while, you said? Yes, since I was around six, seven? Yeah, long time. And you said your family does game nights, or they used to we when you used were younger? To, when we used to do game nights when we were younger, and we'd always be doing like just basic games like Monopoly, we would never finish, Sorry, or something like that. And I was like, what if we bring Lego board games into it? And my mom was like, a board game is a board game, so sure. And I was like, yes. Another so reason to get more Lego. Your mom was the one that really got you guys into board games? She yeah, loves board games? Yeah, she loves family time, so board games was one way to bring our family together and then cause a divide because we'd all argue over who actually won. I still want to think that I won that one game of Monopoly, but everyone says <laughs> otherwise. Is, is, you're not bitter. You're not I'm bitter. not bitter at all. Nope. Is there a game of Monopoly that ever not ends in a fight? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I actually watched this video. I think you sent it to me. Why Monopoly is the worst game ever made. It wasn't a joke. Like, it actually had some legitimate points. But not anyway, the worst one ever made. But It's you know. close. To yeah, it. it's close to it. And Kyle, of course, is related to me. So that's why he's... No. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> the two of us played board games like all kids did, but then once you, you became an adult and married your wife, you guys became board game experts. Can you kind of explain? Well, fanatics, I'm not <laughs> experts, but uh, my wife has a Kickstarter problem. We get a ton of games off of Kickstarter. She has hundreds of games. It's her hobby that bleeded into my hobby. We have lots of current new games. And you guys have actually been beta testers for some games, right? Ooh. Yeah, we tested a couple games. Okay. Uh, one of them was, I guess I can say it now, it's already out, but unmatched. We were play testers for that game. And as a play tester, what do you do? They send you prototypes with no art. And you try the mechanics and everything, and then they have a questionnaire. They say, play this for this amount of time, tell us how, or play this section, tell us how long it took you, fill out this report, and send it to us. And we did that for another game on Tabletopia. Okay. Tabletop Simulator. That's one of those. So you're the closest I know to a game professional. I'm nowhere close. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. <laughs> All we did was play test a couple games. You had to sign up for it, so you yeah. had to ask them. And then they review your file and everything. But today we're talking about, because this is a Lego channel, and Lego did make games. And if you didn't know that, that was a specific theme that started in 2009, and it lasted until 2013. And you'll see some stuff that isn't actually included in the Lego games theme, but we include it here because it is a game or a board game-like thing. Tell me, what makes a good board game? good board game consists of, in my opinion, the more players that can be involved in some <clears throat> games, the better. Brings more people together. So a game that could bring people together. A game that can distract you from what's going on. Like, a game that gets you so involved that you don't want to pick up your phone. That's what I love. I love that sometimes a board game can get everyone so invested that phones are no longer a thing. That is an earmark of our society, mm -hmm. definitely, and I agree with you 100%. If you can forget that <laughs> your phone is sitting right there, mm -hmm. that's a good game. So I would say that, and then also a game with strategy, mm -hmm. a game that every time you play, you learn more about it, and you become better at it, and you can bring that into your next game. 
That's what I would say. Do you have a favorite game ever? Not even a Lego Ooh, game, but... Um, we can come, yeah, back, we can come yeah. back to that we one. Back. There's so many I can think of. So uh, I'm going to go more mechanical. Um, games that are really good are ones that give you interesting choices, um, not obvious things. So when you have something you're going to do in the game, and it's a game where you have to get cards or something like that, and you have a choice of cards, it's where you can do this or you can do that, and they're both good choices. That's what makes a really good game. Okay. Easy to understand rules. They don't. It doesn't have to be an easy game, but the rules themselves have to be easy to understand. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of a route that some games take is simplicity. And the choices are what makes the game interesting, like you were saying. They're heading more toward this simplicity route. I guess there's always going to be both sides of it. Really complicated games with a lot of rules and really simple games. And everything in between. And everything in between. But it seems like there is this trend, correct me if I'm wrong because you guys are more into what's the current thing, but there's this trend to go toward much more streamlined process, but more options. Yeah, and some, you know, trends are, the older ones are going away, and, you know, the rule books, they really try to make streamlined and easy to get through. It's not like the games we played when we were little. Much more streamlined, like you were saying. Favorite game? Uh, There's one called The Cult of Barnacle Bay, and it's a cooperative dungeon crawl. And your fuzzy animals, so they're a little cute. You're just together, and you're fighting monsters. These are townsfolk who are corrupted, and they're like half sea creature and half otter or half bear. <laughs> and it's really cool, and it's a lot of fun. It's got some fun mechanics. It's got what they call exploding dice, where they'll have one side. It'll be a star or something, and that counts as a success, successful hit. But then you get to roll another die. And then if you get that symbol again, you get that counts as success. And it, you roll so it's like a critical hit in a video it's it's a critical game. hit, but right. it keeps, they stack, and it's a lot of fun. But... I got mine. Oh, yes. Okay, favorite all-time game has to be Clue. It may be the inner theater nerd in me. Yes, yes. That whenever we would play it, playing with friends, great time. If you get a bunch of theater people together and play this game of Clue, somehow by the end of it, you are all in costume. <laughs> you have all, like, <laughs> taken on these character personas to the highest extent yes. if you you end up being the murderer. You'll have a full monologue to say afterwards. <laughs> it's just, this I, is how I did this, it. <laughs> yes, it was, me, it was me the whole time. I just remember we would play that at theater camp all the time. And it would get so extreme. Other campers would come and watch us. <laughs> be like, it was a show. It, it became would, a show. It became a show in itself. And it would be like... I remember my final year at camp. Well, you know, one of the final activities, we're going to watch our seniors play Clue. <laughs> now that we say that out loud, that sounds ridiculous, but it's going to take up three hours. It was that entertaining. <laughs> and it probably can get that way for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, What's your favorite game? He's got me into stuff. Whenever he finds something really good, he'll tell me about it. And the one I keep going back to is Hero Realms. You can do it you versus the game or you versus someone else. Basically, it's just a card game, fantasy, medieval fantasy Mm -hmm. themed. But it's super simple. The rules, I can explain to you, no joke, in five minutes, ten minutes. It's the choices and the randomness of the mm-hmm. cards that where you get the strategy. It's a deck building game, so you buy cards from the deck. You okay. only start with five, but some of those cards are money, and you buy more, and as you go, each choice makes your deck more powerful and okay. bigger as you go. And you're fighting monsters, and yes. you're yes. also fighting each other. Yeah, it's, it's really other cool, monsters. and there's different factions, and those can give you power-ups, so your decisions have later implications. I did misspeak when I... The game is called Wanderers, Cult of Barnacle Bay. Oh, okay. So I want to make sure I get the oh, okay. correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those, the, the, those Barnacle Bay fans out there are going to be like, he messed yeah. up! <laughs> you, we have Lego fans. So they're like, what are they talking about? When are we going to start talking about Lego? Lego. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. Let's get into the classic Lego game. Let's start with this one. Let's start with the okay. Hobbit. So they actually made several games. First of all, they're all buildable, which is awesome. They're all Lego buildable games. So it's still using the standard Lego bricks, standard Lego system. In fact, I don't think a single game created a new element other than the dice. So this is the Hobbit game. This is is awesome because it looks like Hobbiton. For all this stuff, there's standard ways you can arrange it, but then you can mix it up and make it your own. For this game, it is a memory game. And it's something they did a lot with these, is that, okay, it's a memory game, but how can we throw a twist in it? Mm -hmm. For this memory game, you roll the dice, move, pick something, 
like uh, you use the torch. I'm not going to explain the whole rules, but you try to match stuff. But depending on what you find, you can then do something else. Did you guys play this game? Yes. What worked with this game and what didn't? What worked with this game, in my opinion, was it brought in memory to it, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. you got to remember where things are. You have to be able to go back, to retrace all your steps, and be like, okay, I remember this person picking it, picking this one up this time. If I remember where that is, I can get that point. You really have to invest yourself in the game. You have to be there. You have to be paying attention. You can see where one of the guys are, but if you aren't, aren't paying attention, then you're going to forget that. Also, it's just a great moving board game with the dice. Mm, it combined a board game, a figure-based moving, like there's little Gandalf. Mm -hmm. And you could have only so many like little studs on the game, so that's a reason why they made your rolls be up to three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because they kept using that idea that a stud is a move. Mm -hmm. A stud is a, a piece, so they didn't have to color it a certain way. You just knew, oh, a stud, and you can't move diagonally. That seems to be a rule for all of them. Did you play this one? I, I actually have that one. Okay. So, yeah, it's the same thing Jareen was saying. And then not all of them use the studs for moving. Sometimes you would, you know, go to different mm -hmm. panels. So that was kind of interesting that each stud was a movement. Um, but, yeah, it was the memory and some you could keep and you could use them for powers for later and stuff. In this one, you're trying to match the dwarves and there's runes and mm -hmm. stuff and then food and they all do different things. Yes. It's like a regular memory card, the old style memory card game, but with a two layered twist mm -hmm. to it. I love it. Can we bring out the Minotaur or Minotaurus? We wanted it very Greek sounding. Now Kyle, since he does so much, so much game testing and things like that, he knows kind of the general terminology for some of these games and the mechanics of it, because game mechanics is so important. This is built on a regular 32 by 32 base plate. And it's so simple. But what I love about this one, and these are the things I love about a lot of these games, is that it uses the Lego-ness of it. It uses the ability that you can take something apart and immediately put it somewhere else or put it back together. I love that about this game. Can you guys explain this game real quick without getting too complicated? It was complicated? just a maze. You mm -hmm. had to get your characters to your color. And um, depending on... Eaten. Yeah, not get eaten. And it does have... You know, some take that. A lot of the Lego games have take that. Take that? What does that take mean? Take that is a game term. It means you can do something mean to the other player. Revenge. <laughs> it's so child. Take that! That's what they call it. Take and that. and yeah, a lot of the Lego games have that. You get to steal something from the other players. Really? Mm -hmm. I think I didn't that's really what like starts that. a lot of arguments. Take uh, that moves in games. Take that, will you? <laughs> take that. You can block other players and stuff like that because a lot of people don't like take that. So they'll buy games that specifically do not have take that, or it's an optional rule. Because you can cause arguments with that. Also, it's just mean. Like, if we're playing Hero Realm, and you have your cards, and there's a mechanic where I can just... That's mine. You'd be like... Ur! But a lot of LEGO games have take that. The reason people are mean is because of take that. That's, yeah. that's, that's what started the whole meanness in the world. Yeah. Just take that, that moves. From yeah. That. But, you know, like I said, some games don't have that. So the take that element is where you get to move the Minotaur. And, and the Minotaur is controlled by... It depends uh, on what you roll, right? Yeah, I think if you roll black, you can then move the Minotaur, mm -hmm. like, so many spaces. So many. If you rolled it, you can move the Minotaur away from you, mm -hmm. or you can move it towards mm -hmm. someone else. Yeah, and if the Minotaur touches a character, I think they have to go either they back to start, to start or yeah. something like that. What is your opinion of Take That Games? I don't like Take That. At all? Like, even if it's a slight, small little element? Or, well, it depends on the game, because sometimes the take that element... Like, this one, it's not so bad, because you have three characters. Some of the others, the wild wool over there, we'll, we'll get to that one. The take that element to that is, you're building up a pile of wool, and you get to steal the entire bit. And so you start over. And that's really mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'll make a kid cry, or an adult. <laughs> <laughs> take that. I don't like take that. So if you were suggesting a game to a customer, let's say, who had small children, you would say don't get this wild one. wool. It's not that bad. My kids <laughs> my kids like it. You have to make it not a big deal. And my kids love the wolf. Like, they'll make the wolf eat the sheep and nom, 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 <laughs> and run around. So Me, personally, my kids... Uh, are, I have twins that are about to be seven. They are so competitive with one another. Mm -hmm. They, no way. 
No, no I say table that. flip. If as okay, soon okay. as so, yeah, I would suggest this one's a good. One. <laughs> this lots one. of crying from me. <laughs> no, this one's a good one because the take that isn't that bad, and it's not this direct like game changing kind of take that. It's right. more like an annoyance. It's a hindrance. Yeah, more than like well, my whole strategy is gone now. Mm-hmm. So you take that as okay if it's. If it's minor, minor. Mm-hmm. Um, the opposite. I oh, love, really? You... I love take oh, that. I love hear it. having take that in games. I feel like it just adds an edge to it. It's okay. like I guess the moment the first person throws a take that, or like I'm gonna play a take that, that's when the game really starts. Because that's when you know <laughs> the gauntlet okay. is thrown. The gauntlet is thrown. That's when you know. Okay, this is now no longer my friend. This is my enemy. <laughs> this is a game. We're going at this. I think it's great. I think it's something kids can learn from. Because mm-hmm. the world's going to take things from you, and you yeah. got to learn to get it back. Oh, I agree with that. So I'm Absolutely. like, well, so I would honestly be like, that's a great thing for kids to yeah. learn. I think, like, Take That Games, they have this certain element to it that can bump up the edge of a game. You could play it, okay, it's very simple, or you could start getting really competitive mm-hmm. with it, and then that competitiveness could lead into, like, turning it into, like, a bigger game. It adds that more competitive edge that I really like. Is there a famous, for either of you guys, people who may not understand, who have never played these games, is there a famous game that has a famous Take That component to it? I think one of the most well-known famous Take That has to be from Uno, which is the draw four card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as Uno has progressed, you can now start stacking those draw fours. Okay. So I think that's a really big or one of the most popular take that moments, I'd say, in games. It's a punishment. Like, if you get stacked, like, four, draw four cards, you're done. Would this be considered a take that in Monopoly if you land on a property that someone has all three of? And you have to pay those. Is that considered take that? Or not since you're giving them something? Well, I mean, that depends on what you roll. Take that is when you specifically target a player. So, you know, we're much meaner. Yeah, take that oh, okay. is, is directed at something. So, like, I'm coming for you. So right. the Uno example would count, but the Monopoly example would not count mm-hmm. because that's based on randomness yeah. of the role. And a lot of times take that is there to take away the leader. It's like a catch-up mechanism. But not all games are like that. Sometimes, you know, you'll be winning and then you get whatever, you roll the right thing and you get to take that to someone else who's in second place and now they're knocked all the way to fourth. That feels terrible when yeah. that happens to you. Great when you're the person doing it. That's <laughs> great when you're the person doing it. Well, I think you're right. There is, not to get too social here, but there is this idea about competitiveness and competition. You know, we're all in this together and games are naturally competitive. That's mm-hmm. the point of it. There is no point to a game unless it's a co-op game, which there are co-op games as well. But in general, the classic board game is competitive. Even if there's no take that component and it's just a race to the end, like snakes and ladders or sorry or something there's still i'm trying to beat you like elbow and get get up to the front so there is something to be learned and like you said it's good for children yeah that you don't always win in life you don't always get the trophy Mm -hmm. i I, would say to a parent coming into the store if you're looking for a lego board game minotaurus is the way to go yeah that's the one i'd start with if we have it get it it's a great family game for players it's super simple it's short which is great for games. Some yeah. games way outstay their welcome. But this one, you can play it really quickly. Yeah. And then it's modular. You can make the, uh, the maze. maze harder mm-hmm. if you want to. You can also add rules. And this is something I want to get into with a lot of these Lego games. Because of the Legoness, because of this awesome dice system that you can just take off the panels and put on whatever you want. You can change the rules. And in these games, a lot of them anyway, they'll give you suggestions. Like, okay, you're done with that version. Now add this version to it. Add this little component. Or take off, you know, the lowest roll, three, and replace it with something else. And now if you roll that, that color or whatever, you can now do this other new power or something. Like, you can fight the Minotaur and things like that. There were different elements to add to it. And so many of these games have this ability to morph into something else. I love that. I love the creativity of being able to change the rules or tweak it. And they give you a jumping off point. They actually say in the rules, try this. Okay, invent your own rules. So they start the juices flowing, and that's so Lego. So Lego. We need to put that on a shirt. (laughs) That's That's so so Lego. I was going to mention that they actually would give you more pieces Mm -hmm. to do that with. So you didn't have to supply your own pieces. Sometimes 
they would give you extra different pieces yeah. and make suggestions. And yeah. Like that. And they would give you pieces and not tell you what to do with them. Like, okay, make some up. I love that. I love that. Let's move on to the wool. <laughs> the, game, the, the game of much contention. Tell me why or why not I should play this. We talked about the tank that system is kind of cruel, and if you have really competitive kids, they may not so, like it. But you also said that, hey, the tank that oh part no. is really cool. <laughs> They're in there. Creepy sheep. The creepy sheep. <laughs> They're creepy. But that's a rare that's piece. Adorable. Look at that dead eye stare. <laughs> No, <laughs> She's gonna so now, this, this game was called something else in Europe. I think it was called Wild Wool Only in America. But anyway, you'd roll the die and it, you would add your wool to your sheep. So they're growing wool. They're growing wool. You're not shearing them, you're growing Well, wool. you would well, shear them. The okay. So once you get so many sheep, and if you roll the correct thing, I think it's pink, you get these, you could... You could shear your sheep, and now now it's banked. No one can take it from you. But if it's on your sheep, somebody could roll the gray, which is the wolf, and the wolf would want to shear the sheep. <laughs> I guess because he wants to eat them after. It's kind of dark. Well, I mean, you don't want to get your mouth full of wool as you're eating meat, right? I mean, you want to take the wool off. I'm not going to get into that, but you could send the wolf to someone. So there's the take that. Oh, so wow. If you're, you know, my kids would like to make the wool grow like that. <laughs> and the, the sheep Another has some reason. booty. Another reason why this game's kind of freaky. How do you build the sheep? Is there a proper way to my, build the sheep? My daughter would make a tummy wool. And so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the wolf can't even move. I can see a genetic experiment. <laughs> the wolf really... is eating from the bottom. Waka, 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 waka. So the other thing was that you could trade a sheep. So if you rolled something, I think green. So if your sheep had four wool and your neighbors had two, and then they could just take your wool. They just switch sheep. So there's several take that components mm -hmm. to this game. So who would be interested in this game? My kids like it, but they love playing with the okay. things. When one of my kids takes the other kid's sheep, then we'd have to make it, you know, not a big deal. You know, kind of laugh it off. Oh, they got your sheep. You know, you have to you have to teach that carefully. So you don't go, oh, yeah. you, you, you took got, your wool. Uh, what your you going to do about it? Gone. <laughs> You're going to cry. Okay. You're going yeah, to cry over a little that. sheep. Would you suggest this? How would you sell this to someone uh, if someone was looking at that as a, like a board game? I would say it's a great game for your kids to be able to play on their own. It's a great game for them. You just to throw it, your kids would be like, go, mom, mom needs some time, go. And then it's also just, in my opinion, it's a great learning game. It's great learning that, once again, you're going to lose. There are things that are going to come after you. But it's also just fun when you think about it. I mean, you're taking wool and you're stealing sheep. I wanna, it's also like I'm, a really quick paced game. Like you can play is. the game in like 10 just, minutes. 10 just 15. reading this, it's two to four players, ages five and up. That's pretty young. Yeah. And 10 to 15 minutes. Is the playtime depending on how many players? Well, the take oh, that, that thing, <laughs> the take that thing. Uh, we had games last way longer than that, just because of the take that. What do you think? Someone was close to winning, was? Whoosh, take them away. What do you think your longest game was? Gosh, we. I think we played that one time and took thirty minutes, which that game should never take. That <laughs> Speaking to what you said, that a lot of the Lego games were designed to be kids' games. Mm -hmm. You give them to the kids, you help them with the rules, and then you leave. Uh, not many of the games are family games where everybody plays. Tell me why. I think le that's what LEGO wanted. They wanted mm -hmm. to make the kids' games. The family games, you know, the rules are really light and really easy. There's not a lot there for the parents to get involved in or interested in. And so... So it's too simple. Too simple. Where the rules are so simple you could give to the kids. So, like, Minotaur is two to four players, seven plus... 20 to 30 minutes. I'm kind of confused on that one because I've only played Minotaurus. Mm. Why is that two years older? It seems like this one's simpler no. than I this one. I would maybe think because maybe it's because of all the small pieces. I think the there's more. Oh, with, you're right. That's a component fear to of it. Because like, mm -hmm. in this one, you have like Lego the big, blocks. big, that's right. Like and this one has studs. And, and okay. a kid could easily just go, Skittle. And yeah, then just okay. Eat it. This one had more strategy, too. You could plan out where to put the bricks. I'm going to bottleneck the other person. Like, if you get the wall, you could bottleneck people. And then, you know, if I get the Venatoris, I can make them come around the other way. So there's a little more strategy. Oh, uh, whereas this one, almost no strategy. If it's, it rolls this, you do this. Yeah, there is no strategy. Okay. <laughs> okay. The only choice you get to make in that game 
is who you still them. have the double thing. So oh, okay. You could choose to do the wolf, or you could choose to shear your sheep. Other than being scary, Jillian, what was, uh, did you have something else? No, that, that was it. It's just they're creepy looking. I don't like the eyes. And, well, what do you call that piece? Because that's a really rare piece, isn't it? Which one? Uh, the, um, the, the modified stud. stud. Modified stud. The round stud. The it's eyes. not rare anymore. Oh, it's not no. rare. Um, Very common for Technics. And... Uh, uh, okay, because I think when that game came out, that was like a very rare piece. Yeah. Well, like, like you were saying, they're little beady eyes that stare into your soul yeah. and they tell you what you've done wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when this first came out, talking about the piece, people loved it because now you could put bar connections and studs mm -hmm. and stuff. And But now they make them in every color oh, and they're pretty yeah. common. But maybe yeah. when this came out... I mean, I love the game. Did not like the design. Design kind of freaked me out. But at the end of the day... What about the wolf? He was chill. <laughs> it was the sheep I didn't like. He does kind of have this, like, like going to work look to him. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's hunting. He's, hunting. he's yeah. concentrating. He's like, these sheep are always straight. Get him wool. Lose him wool. I just want to eat them. Where does a Lego game fail? I think it's the, the kid mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they should have made the games just for kids. I think part of that was because of the cost. They mm -hmm. had to keep the cost down. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't want to add too much to make it too involved. Speaking of cost, I wish Chris was here because he has all these prices <laughs> memorized. But the Harry Potter game is like 40 or $50. Yes. Now, remember, these games are like 10 years old now. Some of them older. They don't have super rare pieces except for the game pieces. Yeah. But we sell just these for, for like two dollars, right? We sell them for a dollar each. So you could almost build this yourself. But if you want the box, the instructions, and everything, and a nice neat package, this was like forty or fifty dollars when you bought it, right? Uh, close to it, I think. Um, the Minotaur is around that price, it's thirty-five. Around thirty-five, to thirty-five to forty dollars. Yeah. So they're not insane, even though they're they're older. And maybe it's because people just don't know about them, or maybe the game aren't as popular and like some people may think oh that is somewhat like a high price for a board game you got to remember it's also a lego set yeah you are building lego it comes yes. with all these pieces unlike a board game where it's like the board you get your little players that's it this is actually a buildable thing yeah and you can use these pieces for other things yeah. <laughs> price for a board game i'd like to speak yes, to that yes, because you know in. on if you're a kickstarter board gamer you can easily go to a hundred dollars mm. for a board game they just came out with the hero quest you know, Hasbro re-released Hero Quest. And are you a Hero Quester? I She was too I, young. Yeah, I was it, yeah, I think I was a bit too young, but I've played it once or twice. Okay, yeah. well Hasbro is re-releasing Hero Quest and I think that was uh, about a hundred dollars. But and it so, came with tons of minis and that's what drives the cost up. Minis yeah, so, are the little uh figures and um, games like Barnacle Bay, the Wonders of Barnacle Bay, that was if you wanted everything with the Kickstarter, that was a hundred dollars. So like they could have easily done that with these and make these more beefy, bigger games, but they didn't. You know, what was this at retail? Maybe 30? Probably. 30, maybe 40. Yeah, 30 or 40. Nice. I think 35. Yeah, that's not bad. You gotta pay for the licensing, too. Mm -hmm. Speaking of licensing, there was a couple of themes mm -hmm. they made, sub-themes. So Ramses was one of them. Do you have the Ramses Pyramid game, I Kyle? Do. And that is another classic style game with a twist, right? Yes. Can you explain that? Um, this is a roll and move game. I actually played this last night in preparation for this video. You go around the board first time and you have to collect these gems. And then the, once you go around one time, you have your little camps over here in the corner. You have these little tents on the side and there's one for each color. And then once you have those gems, you can then start climbing the pyramid. Now it uses the Lego-ness of it because on one of the die, faces you can turn the pyramid so you can make the gem that you have so you can only climb the stairs if you have that gem or there's a memory component inside these jars are another colored gem so you look at and don't show anyone so you have to what? remember where they are and go up the thing you that's can also, awesome yeah you can also if you roll a mummy you can send the mummy down oh, now, you cannot cool. climb if the mummy's there that's like so you mixing. Have to go around. That's mixing the memory and the Minotaur together. Yeah, it's it's moving memory, and you have to get the right order. Now, this was co-designed by a very famous game board designer, Reiner Kanitska. Reiner, Reiner. He's German. Okay. Apparently, a super nice guy. And he's a famous game designer in the board game world. Yes, according to who you talk to, he's one of the top one or two. Ooh. And he did that for Lego. So he was a consultant. A consultant. It says co-created. Okay. So, famous German game board designer. Can you name some 
other games that people might know that he Tigris, did. Tigris, Euphrates. But actually, I looked. I don't have any of his games. So that guy was pretty famous. Yes. Tigris, Euphrates, uh, Blue Moon, Blue Moon City. Those are some of his most popular I, I've games. never heard of those. You said this man, this single individual, has won multiple awards. Yes. Uh, a lot of his games have won awards. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Lego's getting some famous people. To work for them. Dang Lego. Dang Lego. Moving up in the world. Look, look, at, look at you. you go. Look at you, Lego. All right. And you were explaining Ramsey's Pyramid. Now, that was one of the sub themes. They actually made three or four games. Mm -hmm. Were they connectable with that, or were they just using the same theme? Not that I'm aware of. I think it was just using the same theme. Okay. There was nothing in the instructions about connecting them. Okay. And it looks like Lava Dragon was similar to Ramsey's Pyramid. Yes, do you have this one? Yes, I do. Uh, you were moving up the pyramid. Basically, you just move up and you try to ride the dragon. First one to ride the dragon wins. And you just roll and you can either go up or you can block somebody. And there's a really mean rule that you can add into it. It's not in the base game, but you could you have a pole, and if somebody's standing in front of that Technic hole, you can just pop them off, and they have to like start wipe out. Dang! <laughs> like the just punching like, glove and wipe <laughs> Yeah, And that's yeah. in the game, like the more advanced version? Yeah, that's under, you know, change the game, make it your own. Now you can punch people off the <laughs> I love it. I believe the LEGO board games introduced these game pieces, right? I don't yes, think... They did. We said earlier, so a correction, I said they didn't introduce new pieces, but I think... <laughs> These were new, and they had some cool prints. They do, and yeah. Stuff. The only other time that I can really think of them being in a set, the first one that comes to mind is the hog with the giant Hogwarts castle. It came with all the little people. Like all the the new people. one, you mean? Yeah. That had the micro. Oh, that right? had the micro. And it didn't have these, but these were used as statues yeah. in okay, like the Lord of Rings sets. Also the Ant Man ones. Yeah, okay. yeah. Those are called nano figs, right? Yes. Those I forgot what these are called. Micro figs, I think. Oh, okay. I thought okay. they were like game. I uh, made own. game pieces and Maybe. stuff. Now, you were know. talking a little bit about where LEGO games fell, and you said one thing you did not like about it is that they were almost too simple. They were very simple. They used very old mechanics, like we were talking about this earlier, how so they're for, all roll and move. Well, for a, so many, not all of them. For someone who's not huge into board games, can you explain what you mean by what's an old game mechanic? Well, like rolling to move, mm -hmm. whereas modern games, you would have movement points. And this also differentiates the character. So if you had a wizard, the wizard could move three, and but the rogue could move four. So it differentiated the characters more and made them feel more individual. You would have different action points a lot of times in games where you could either move and attack or move twice or attack twice. So there was, again, more choice what you could do. And whereas these, you roll, oh, you moved one. I guess I'm not doing anything else this turn. And a lot of the games were like that. And you don't need roll to move anymore. That's kind of, that's very old school. Okay. Hero Quest, that game we were talking about earlier, that was not a roll and move. Because you had movement points for that. And it is roll and move. It is? You do. Yeah, that was, I don't want to say it was one of the last games to do that, but it is a game that did that. But you don't have teeny tiny studs mm -hmm. that go on forever. Mm -hmm. You have these linear things, and if you roll the six, phew, you're shooting across the board. Okay. And most of these Lego games, I think, like four or five was the largest yeah. number. Yeah, but, but again, not all of them you move per stud. Mm -hmm. A lot of the games you move on bases. Well, let's go into, since we're talking about where games fail, and we've talked about this a little bit, I'm curious to get your perspective okay. on it too. Get into the largest and I would say most popular sub-theme of the LEGO games is Heroica. There's the banner for it. There's two banners for it there. It was their answer pretty much to like a Dungeons and Dragons, a super simplified Dungeons and Dragons for kids. Can you explain Heroica and how it works? Would you like to go first, Jimmy? Uh, you can go first. Okay, so this was, you basically made it to the end. It was a race to the end. And you would either defeat the monster, or you would get a helmet, or a key, or something something at the end of the game. And there were different scenarios. And you mentioned this was like a Dungeon and Dragons. Dungeon and Dragons is a role-playing game. Mm -hmm. And these were not role-playing games. You did not role-play. These were dungeon crawls, is what they would call them. And you're moving through a dungeon, different paths, there's different monsters, there's different obstacles, you have to get keys, you have to get potions. It was in, like, a Dungeon Dragons world. So there's orcs and knights there's orcs. and stuff. One had yeah. a vampire theme, one had just different monsters. Very cool pieces. Very cool layouts. Really neat. 
Again, not a lot of choices. There and you had life, too, right? Like, you, you could get hits. So there was a fighting component, too. There is a fighting component. It would use the die, and you had one or two paths to go down. Mm-hmm. You would get a key to unlock a door. That's about how it played. And your character would have different powers, but you couldn't use them at any time. It was kind of weird the way they set it up. I wanted to do a game review for the channel of a larger, one of the larger Heroica ones. Mm-hmm. And I actually took it home. I invented I found all the pieces. I ended up not doing the video because once I played it with my kids, I found that it was too simplistic. Mm -hmm. There wasn't enough to talk about. There wasn't enough to go into Mm -hmm. with the game. Even the playthrough with my kids, it was just like, okay, roll, fight. Oh, roll. You lost. Oh, roll. What is your opinion on it? Yeah, it is very simple. Honestly, I never really dove, dove into it Mm -hmm. because, I mean, I played one and I was like, there are other Lego games to play that I, in my opinion, have more build to it and more strategy to it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really felt custom to. I never really got into the whole heroic thing, but like some people are really into it. I mean, they made different variants of it. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was popular. There's like 10 or 12 of these, all different sizes, and they all connect. So you can make a huge dungeon. Now that is really cool. That is neat. And there's, you'll see there's no game base to it. There's no bottom to it. So you can rearrange it any way you want it. They're just two buys plates and you just connect it any way you want. And they give suggestions on how to combine them. two or nine? There's like, yeah, there's six buys. You can connect them with a two by Mm -hmm. sixes or eights. Modular board. That's a Lego term and a board game term Mm -hmm. uh, when you have modular boards. But I think one of the reasons people like this is the theme. The theme's so cool. The dungeon crawl theme. People wanted these games, or I felt like for me, they wanted these games to be really good, and they weren't. Unfortunately, why weren't they good? It's it's a roll and move. There's no interesting choices to do your official power. You had to roll one of the dice sides. Do you have one? This is one of the die sides. So you had to roll a shield, and that's the only way to use your power. So if the barbarian could attack two people at once, that's his power. You had to roll that shield to do it. And you had to have two enemies in front of you. You had to have two enemies, which almost never happened because enemies were spread out. There's a humongous first player advantage. The first player would just run off and do everything. And the poor person in fourth place, the fourth one to go, they didn't do anything. They wouldn't find a monster because they were all dead by the time they got there. Or defeated. We don't say that in the game. Uh, they were defeated. And th- there was no keys to get for the fourth player because all the keys were gotten by the first two players probably. And and the third player usually didn't get to do anything. I was a second person when we played with my four children. I was the second person to go and I won because the first player got to the end first because first player you have four children? Four people, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> four Where people. are you hiding these other two kids? <laughs> no, I include myself in my life. So us children, my wife included myself. When we were playing, I was the second person, my youngest daughter, she opened the door but she didn't quite, she didn't roll high enough to get through the door. And I just happened to, I didn't need the key because she unlocked it. You just one. barreled past exactly. it. But it's cooperative. It's not. That's the other thing that I completely disagree with these games. Dungeon crawls, in my opinion, are supposed to be cooperative. And these aren't. You are together in the dungeon, but it's the first to the end that wins. And oh, so man. I love cooperative games. That's my favorite type of game. I love dungeon crawl games. That is only one of the two. <laughs> checks for this game. They are not cooperative. It's first to the end wins. Is there something that you won that carried over into the next one when you defeated the enemy? Okay. You defeat the enemy, you usually get gold. That was also kind of silly because you could win gold to buy stuff but usually, especially at a higher player count, there was not enough gold to go around. Okay. The way that What did you buy? Could you buy life good back and potions and stuff? No, life, If uh, this was really nice, because if you were defeated, you weren't out of the game. So there's no player elimination. You would roll until you got your life points back. So basically, you were knocked down. So you could come back. Okay. But the game is kind of short, so by the time you had all your life points back, the game's over. But there was individuality with the characters, right? You said Only if you rolled a shield. So that's where the game failed. It was too simple. What about the modularity or the ability to make it even bigger? Would that solve some of those problems? Possibly, because when we're playing the base game, Heroica, there's only... Uh, we're talking about player choice. Uh, that's the main thing, I think, what makes a game good is when you have interesting choices. And this was, there's only one or two paths. 
So if you were able to spread out this giant thing, you could have at least fix that because there's multiple paths to victory. Of course, mm. you'd have to plan that out yeah. because if you just slapped it together willy-nilly, it wouldn't make for a good game. The other thing that LEGO assumes, I'm going off on a tangent here, they would say, oh, just change the game. Just add this, make this. But that's really hard. That's like building one of those racing cars, the champions, with no instructions, just the picture. Mm. To make a game that's competent, that's fun, that's not completely broken, i.e. there's a rule where someone can just win the whole thing just because of a loophole. That's really difficult to do. And for Lego to put that in the back of the book, just change the game. That's really difficult. I know, because I've tried and failed multiple times. <laughs> it is difficult to make a good game. Mm -hmm. So, like, these guys are geniuses to make a game. Not only that's competent, but that's fun. Mm -hmm. And simple. And simple, where it's not so convoluted that it's just a big mess. Yeah. I will say, to defend LEGO a little bit, they would give you suggestions on how to they would. Mm -hmm. make changes, and that was supposed to be a springboard. Like, you want to do these small changes, mm -hmm. and you want to change just this one and they, thing. Yes. And they would say that in the instructions. They make said, don't make changes. a bunch of changes mm -hmm. at once. Make one change, play it a few times, and see. And they would, to defend LEGO a little bit, they did put that in the instructions. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. And someone who's playtested a professional game, they would do that too. But they didn't ask Ask us as playtesters, what would you change? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to add this? They would say, okay, we're, we're going to train the beta mm -hmm. testing. Okay. They would change the rules and mm -hmm. then they'd say, okay, try this out. You know, it's difficult. I want to say when we play tested it, the game Unmatched was from an older game that already existed. So they were just modernizing it. They weren't coming up from scratch. And it still took them months to play test it. Now, you said you didn't play Heroica that much, mm -hmm. but do you like these dungeon crawl, or do you like the theme of medieval fantasy? I love medieval fantasy. I'm obsessed with medieval fantasy. Like, find me at the Ren Fair every day <laughs> that it's open. And I love games based off of that. I enjoy a good dungeon crawl. I just never got into Heroica. Okay. Once again, it's, it was just the very so simplistic. It's it too like, simple. Like, yeah. I, was, I was telling you this story earlier. My wife was in the kitchen while I was with the kids, and she was still able to play. It was just, just roll for me. And no game should be like mm. that. Well, it is for seven and up. I Five would... to ten minutes for this shorter version. The bigger versions take longer. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when you put it together, they take longer. They're really pretty. They're really nice. Box art is amazing. Mm -hmm. Design and, is mm -hmm. When you have it all laid out, it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And when table. you connect them all together, mm -hmm. it looks awesome. So you were talking about the flaws of changing the game to make it more interesting. That's is difficult. this, yeah. for an adult, is this salvageable? Can you come up with I, something? I looked up rules. There's people who invented Advanced Hero Quest, but it's not actually that much more. Heroica. Heroica, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, sorry, Hasbro. Yeah, Advanced Hero Heroica is not that much different. It's okay. They added some of the rules and stuff. they changed a few things. But, I don't know, you'd have to rework it, I think. Yeah. Rework it completely. Okay. Yeah. The, I think the bones are there, but it would take someone way smarter than me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, to reiterate, the reason why I didn't make that video is that's what I found. There wasn't enough to talk about in the video, so I never made it. Let's move on to probably, in my opinion, I haven't played as much as you guys. Mm -hmm. But the few I have played, the most successful one. I did make a video of this. Watch it. This is the Lego Harry Potter board game. And I'm not saying this oh I'm not saying this because I'm a Harry Potter fan, although I am. This is the best one I've played because it is fun. I would say the strategy is multi-tiered. Basically, you're you pick a house. If you're Slytherin. You're going to move along, and you roll to get into the classrooms, and once you're in the classroom, you collect that classroom's homework. Potions, Transfiguration, the library, and Astrology Tower. And once you collect it, it goes back to your house, and then you have to be the first to get back. Well, when you roll certain things, you can pick up and slide stuff around. And Just there's different like the stairways. There's different complexities to that. And yes... It uses that from the movie, the moving staircase, which was not in the book, I don't no. think, that they added in the movie. So they use that theme to make an entire game. And there, underneath is these large panel pieces, so it makes it really easy to move around and rearrange it, similar to the 
Ramsey's Pyramid, you can move stuff closer to you. You can move other things that other people want farther away from you. The specific characters don't matter, though you can add Mrs. Norris that you want to avoid. You can add Dumbledore who can help you. I love but that. But you don't have to. The base game is amazing because then, as an adult, it was complicated enough where you're like, okay, I can move something twice. Wait, okay, if I pick this up, no, that won't. If I can slide it. Yes, I can slide it here. So it got really complicated, and I loved it because it did multiple things. It used the theme of the movie as part of the game mechanics. It was a game mechanic that was complicated, or had complicated implications, but simple ideas, simple strategy. Yeah. They call this a puzzly game. A puzzly game? Yeah, it's, okay. it's a puzzle where you have to figure out what's the best move. There's a ton of options. So going back to interesting choices, there's a ton of options. It's like, what do you do? And what's the most efficient thing to do? And I found, watch the review, because I actually play all the way through with my kids, and then I, I tell you exactly how it works. I found that once you had all the homework, it really got crazy because uh, I want to get back to my house as fast as possible. <laughs> and that's when it really got into like, okay, I got two moves. How can I move this to get to the fastest way possible? And I can rotate some of these movement squares. And no, that one has to be there so that I can. Mm. It got crazy strategy. <laughs> and you had to think ahead, almost like chess. You had to think ahead of how you were going to move mm. this stuff. You didn't get to play this one. I don't think you knew this one existed until we did this. I'd seen it with the box. Okay. I'd, I'd seen like a playthrough of it. And, of course, I've seen the parts and the pieces everywhere. But, no, this just sounds like such a fun game. It was awesome. And I've never seen a game, and you tell me, game expert, if you've seen anything. I've never seen a game that has this sliding aspect where the game changes as you go. I think it's great just because it also fixes with the story. Yes! It fixes with the staircases from Hogwarts, mm -hmm. from the movies that move. And sometimes, like, I remember Harry, Ron, and Hermione, the first movie, they didn't get to get the pick when the stairs moved. Mm -hmm. They get moved them to mm -hmm. show them, like, into, like, Fluffy's chambers. So, like, yes. I love that it implicates that part from the movie and puts it onto the board game. Also, I think that Dumbledore is really adorable. Yeah. So, the theme, which is the Harry Potter and the moving staircase, integrates perfectly with the game mechanic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the mechanic of moving everything. So these are the staircases and stuff like that. It was, you know, interesting choices. You could turn stuff. It, depending on what you roll, you could either turn stuff or you could slide everything. Mm -hmm. And this, out of all the games, I think, used the Lego-ness more than anything yeah. else. Is there a game similar to this? Have you ever seen a game that you could slide I'm, the board around? I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying to, think, to think of one. Yeah. I'm sure it's been done somewhat, maybe not where it was like you're actually moving mm -hmm but where it was tiles you had to match. Mm -hmm. You know, more of a themeless game, mm -hmm. where it's just symbols you had to line up. Whereas this one, it's actually a physical, you're yeah. moving through the staircase. Everything's tied together, everything goes back to the movie, but yet it's not a gimmick. It's right. actually a good game mm -hmm. on top it is. of that. And you could even roll the Marauder's Map, which allowed you to do certain things. You could go through. It didn't matter if they were connected or not. Yeah. You could just move. Um, and again, you could change the tiles. You could take away the one and make that a Mrs. Norris token. So mm -hmm. now Mrs. Norris, and if you're near Mrs. Norris, she would send you back to your house mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Or if you were near Dumbledore, he would take you to the closest classroom. It was really cool. They even added specific characters. Mm. And they did not tell you what to do with them. They said, really? figure it out. Add, add specific characters. Maybe there's a dueling thing. Actually, that was in the instructions. You could add dueling into mm -hmm. it. But Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Malfoy were all characters they added. Because these are supposed to be generic people, mm -hmm. although you could probably guess who they are. Like, that yeah. one looks like Crab to me. Yeah, that one's a Malfoy. Or, oh, uh, no, 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 that is Crab. But it was just so cool to me. I couldn't gush enough about this game. Watch that review. So you said you haven't seen a game like this before. I can't think of one. Okay. But th this is a very cool game. I think it works better with lower player counts. Two people, I think this would be a great game because you can kind of predict. We played with four, my whole family, and it was a little bit difficult. It moved too much. And you couldn't count on anything. If you were in the lead, then everybody was against you. Everybody was moving you away from your house, and it was very difficult to win. <laughs> mm, okay. Like, you basically just had to be really lucky. But for lower player counts, you could plan out your moves. You could do the puzzly thing. Mm -hmm. Of the few games that I've played of LEGO, this is the one I highly suggest. And if anyone comes in and asks me what's the best LEGO game, this is it. 
Okay. In my opinion, I like that one. I also like that pirate code. Let's talk about that one. What is pirate code? So pirate code is if you ever played the old game Mastermind. This mm -hmm. is a simplified version of Mastermind. So you basically come up with a code that you hide from all the other players, and it was a gem code. And then you would have to guess the other people's code. And the first person to get the correct code in the correct order, right colors, right order, you won the game. Okay. Really? Is That's that an orange gem piece? I don't think I've ever That's seen that before. Me. Yeah. That's a unique yep. piece. The big giant. Orange. Trans yeah, right orange. What? I didn't realize that was rare. <laughs> you you never you're geeking seen... out about this. Like, <gasps> you never see trans orange. They came orange. with 12 of them. This might be coming home with me. <laughs> no, this is my game, buddy. <laughs> Oh, that's but that's awesome. a fun one. This one gets played a lot. Okay, so it's, this is a puzzle and remembering and figuring out. So what happens if you guess the wrong code? You just basically lose your turn. So you're trying to figure out the code what the other person has. Okay. And it's really cool. quick. My youngest daughter can play this, no problem. Is it kind of like Clue where there's a process of elimination? It, like, I know his third gem is this color. I know his... How does that work? So if you get the right color, it goes off to the side or it goes in a different spot, so you know that color is there. Okay. But then you have to figure out, okay, I know that color is there, now I have to figure out what spot it's Ooh. in. And so you're trying to get the right color and the right position. This might be a purchase for me, then. That's cool. That this, orange gem. That's, yeah. <laughs> Trans orange. This is eight and up. Okay. For this one. I think it's maybe the memorization. We, probably. Yeah, but I mean, my six-year-old plays it no problem. She's pretty bright, though. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy loves you, honey. Daddy loves you. I want to get into a game. Let's do it. Now, you said you guys played this one all the time. Oh, yeah. What Creationary. is... This Creation. is the loudest game. <laughs> yeah. Because it probably has the most pieces that mm -hmm. are loose. Creationary, much like the game Pictionary, you get a object or a place and you have to build it. Instead of, like, Pictionary where you're drawing it or charades where you're acting it out, you get to build it. And you have these cards. It may have been rolled, but there were vehicles, objects, houses, and plants. And you picked one of them, and you had to try to build it within... If I remember right, there's also, like, a timer. Yeah, you roll to see which one you would get, and then you just had to try to build it. Like, this one is, like, a doghouse, a boat, a camera, or a cactus. I win. <laughs> that is cheating. That is cheating, my good sir. That was quick, too. <laughs> and then there were ones that, like, that went up in difficulty by, mm -hmm. like... How many question marks? Yeah. yeah. So one is the most? One, one is, is the easiest. So easy. how did you decide who built it the best, or how would that work? It's whoever it's guessed it. whoever guesses it. Just like Pictionary, you have to guess what it is. So one oh. person would be the builder, and the first person to guess what they built. And you knew the category. Yeah. Because you knew whether it was, you know, a building, a thing, or a vehicle. Yeah. Like, so this is like Lego Masters, the board game. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. So I mentioned that this was the most Lego-y game. Mm -hmm. This is this one. I was going to say, this, this is because you're Lego literally game. building from just blocks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's the point of the game. Say someone built that red thing, and someone says, oh, it's a T-Rex. You would show them your card and say, yeah, you guessed it right. Yeah. Okay. And I just loved it because of the different building implements to it. It was amazing. Also, they increase by difficulty. Like, level one, you've got, like, a fireplace, a truck, a flower, and then, like, a boating dock. As it gets more difficult, a coconut, an elevator, what well, looks like a telephone wire pole, and a light bulb. Wow. So try building that. So with my kids, we have this game also. We would just play with the one question marks. Okay. Just to keep so one simple. is the easiest, three is the hardest. That's cool because they had levels of difficulty. And this says 7 plus on this one. There's a longer game, 30 to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is the most Lego-y Lego, -y, it's a Lego game. game. I like this game. The worst part about it is how long it takes to build. Because when someone's building, you're just... That's why I think my family, we implemented a timer to it. Yeah. We went to like the Dollar Tree and got one of those little like toothbrush okay. timers or whatever. So mm -hmm. you had like a minute or so okay. to try and build it. And you, you were limited with the pieces that yes. were came with the game, but I suppose you could add your own pieces. You could add your you own if you to. wanted to, but just playing with the ones with the game made it more simple. Like it came mm -hmm. with a lot of great pieces. It came with wheels. Yep. It came with Different trans ones. pieces. Like I guess this would be great for the light bulb. Mm -hmm. uh, poles or what are they called? What are the sticks? Bars. bars. The bars. So it came with the bars. Domes. A lot of different great pieces with, to build uh, with. Yeah, it came with one minifigure. So yes. if you built something that was 
Like the boat, I see yeah. that. You put him in there to help. Are you limited on pieces? I mean, what if someone's using the pieces you need? No, no, you do it one at a time. Yeah. Oh, so, so everyone have... has all access to yeah. everything. Yes. Oh, okay. Which is also one of the disadvantages, because they're all just waiting there. And after you get it, yeah, you won. Now you got to take it apart. Uh... And then put everything back. Okay, next person. There right. are, it does have its faults, but at the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's a great building game. Mm-hmm. It really could help kids learn, like, here you're like, you don't need a set to build. Right. Mm-hmm. You can build with just loose Lego, which is amazing. That is amazing. And what's very cool is they give you lots of suggestions around On the side. On the side. Like and there's so, a rhinoceros, mm-hmm. there's fruit, there's like flower. This. The dragonfly. The dragonfly and a lawnmower. The screw. Just the power tool. Mm-hmm. And so it gives you all these great ideas how to build. And those are from the cards. Mm-hmm. So so it doesn't come with instruction cards, but it comes with, like, photo examples. They're not pictures of Lego. They're just regular pictures. Mm-hmm. That is cool. They should totally redo this as a Lego Master game. And <laughs> I, it, yeah, they it could rebrand it. It would probably be too expensive. But they double the piece count. Yes. And everyone has their own, so you could build your own at the same time. Yeah. All right, so another highly recommended game. Harry Potter and this one. Buy it today. If, <laughs> but if, if, we, we, have if it. we have it in store, I would definitely pick it up. That is awesome. I and think we've had it a few times. I okay. know I've sold Nick Neiman Well, Potter. looks like Kyle got it from here, from us. Atlanta Brick, oh, yeah. pre-owned. So Finder sticker. That's awesome. All right, so the Lego games theme lasted until 2013, but they still made games. Yes. They still made chess Mm-hmm. Games. They're supposed to be coming out with that new Harry Potter one that we talked about. Yes, that's apparently the rumor the is rumor. it's going. Have you you watched the Harry Potter one, didn't you? You watched our videos, right? Oh, of course. You <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep at that part. Subscribe, people. Thumbs up. They made this Bionicle game, which was not made by Lego. It was licensed mm-hmm. by, Lego. by Lego. I've never played this. I didn't know it existed. I went through the graveyard just to get our game's graveyard to get boxes, and I saw this in a... What is this? But we won't talk about it because none of us knew it existed. None I mean, of us know um, it. It's but a, Bionicle it's a, fans. Bionicle fans. It's a panel crazy. type game where you build the board, it yeah, looks you, like. You can tell Lego didn't make it because it actually has cardboard. It was made by the company Rose Art, and Rose Art is very popularly known to make craft kits. So my, my theory behind this is that... Lego went to Rose Art saying, we know you guys can make these games. We have a license we want to make into a game. If y'all provide the tools we need to make all the cardboard board parts, and you guys can get profit from it. But we'll use our license in our name and smack it on there. Same it's for this another one. Rose Art. And you can definitely tell versus the Lego art. Sure, it shows the Lego pieces, mm-hmm. but it's not like the minifigures. This is very much Rose Art's design. Yeah. Now, this is odd because it shows minifigures. This came with minifigures. Not, well, these are not minifigures. Those are like, these remind me of these, like the ones we have for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. CCBS. Yes. They're kind of like a CCBS for the Knights. And these were supposed to be these guys just upscale and then they just have i guess the more intricate design mm-hmm. so <laughs> for this one i actually bought this from chris incomplete because it came with all the minifigures the mini chris let me have it because cool. it had all the minifigures it has the game board but it's missing some of the cards and stuff and it had the one buildable guy which was a special king version of them but these had a different play component you actually battled and knocked weapons out of their hands but in the wow. game you built power-ups and they all had different cards and stuff but I can't play it because I don't have the whole thing. Yeah. Again, I just bought it for those cool minifigs because it was yeah. the best way to get all of them. The armor pieces. Yeah. Speaking of minifigs, the chess board, that is another one I found in our graveyard. That is... Though... It has the queen. That one might be very complete. nearly complete. It might be. I have to... Oh. This might be close enough to inventory. This goes for a lot of money. This was one of the few chess sets that had the molded base plate. Yes. Most of them were buildable. They've done several chess sets now. Mm -hmm. They did a Kingdoms one. They did this one. They did the Viking. Yes. They did a pirate theme one. And then they did just the regular chess set. But this was a good army builder. It was not that expensive at the time. And you got a ton of figs. And none of them were exclusive, from what Chris was saying. None of them were super exclusive at the time. Of course, now these are hard to get. We definitely would throw these in with knights. 
yeah. in our minifig cases. If you guys want someone to inventory this, if you, anyone's interested, what, we can put someone on inventorying this. I do know currently we do have the Kingdoms version of this for sale. We've had the Vikings before, but it yes. got sold. They had really cool boxes, and they had the minifigures displayed in the oh, boxes. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, but they had buildable boards, mm -hmm. and this one was the only one with this cool molded chess base plate. plate yeah. Chess base plate, which was awesome. Now, chess... I gotta go on a chess rant. Here we go. A little bit. I used to really like chess. I was okay. never very good at it. And there was always this draw, this sophistication. Yeah, can, can you confirm he was never really good at it? I seem to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, it In was, his defense, I was never very good at it. Uh, yeah, we were both just like stunk at it together. <laughs> we were just both staring at the board. It has this level of sophistication, and you always had this idea, oh, it, it's this supreme strategy and looking ahead and being able to read your opponent's movements. The more I went down the chess rabbit hole and the more I played people who were good at it, I realized none of that is true. Chess is about memorizing patterns. And the better your brain is at acting like a computer and memorizing patterns and changing to a different pattern, if that pattern doesn't work, the better you are at chess. Okay. And that's why a human will never beat a computer, because its memory is just so much better. And it has an infinite possibility. The people I played that were really good at chess, that's all they did. They went online and they memorized patterns. Okay. And that's all chess is. There's this idea of pure strategy and like, I know how these pieces move and I know if I do this, then he might do that. That is not true, at least not in the higher levels of chess playing. It's just people who are computer brains okay. who memorize patterns. And it completely destroyed the game for me once I found that out. It's like, oh... I'll never be good at this game because I don't have a good memory for patterns. For me, that's breaking the spirit of the game. Because you're Absolutely. Not supposed, you're not supposed to do that. Those people only care about winning or competing or whatever. And, you know, they say the same exact thing about poker. Those people who are really good at poker are number files. It's just probability and that's all they care about. It's not the, you know... Lone Texas Hold'em dude with yeah. his, with his revolver under the yeah, table. Yeah, with his <laughs> Lego revolver. Oh, tumbleweed. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's b killing the spirit of the game. People do Absolutely. that with board games, too, where they'll analyze a game to death and then they, they never lose at it. Yeah. You know, that's not the way you should play games. Mm -hmm. It's just for fun. Yeah. You don't play to win, you play to fun. You play, you, to, play. you play to play. You play to fun. You play to win. Or, you play to fun. New shirt. Yeah, you yeah. play to fun. Uh, that's, that'll be our Lego game. Our new play shirt. to fun. Play to Lego games. Play to fun. We good at English. <laughs> English well. Play to fun. Uh, the latest game that Lego has created, they snuck in as a regular Lego Ninjago system set. This game was a regular, awesome, cool uh, set, but it also had a game component to it. Each set you bought came with this, and it explained the rules of the game using no words. And all these tiles, these half tile, half yeah. stud, what, what's the official name of those? We'll call them half halves. Half halves. Half halves. Uh, you roll the dice like that, like a regular spinner, so it's bringing in the Ninjago. This one doesn't have the base That's to it, so it's not going to tip over, but it's supposed to tip over. Whatever is on top is what you do. If you're moving, then you use the top half. If you're fighting, you use the bottom half. There's certain spaces where, like if it has a skull, it's an enemy space, and they just hang out there. And you move your guy however many spaces, and if you meet an enemy, you roll to fight. And if you get a heart, you won the battle. If you get a skull, you get a life taken away. Oops, sorry. So this Lloyd. is just Heroica. What? This is Heroica, but as a playset. So you don't have to use it as a game, or you can combine the two, where there's the regular play, role play, and a board game element as well. So it was so cool to me, but you're right. It is just Heroica. Yeah, it's, if you want Heroica, the game, this yeah. is it. Only better. But let's touch on, this has some amazing pieces to it, mm -hmm. though. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've never seen this one before. It's a little loot. Yeah, yeah. That's just... It's like a little loot. The bad guy likes to play. And it has a moving component where the, the lava is moving up and down. That really doesn't do anything in the, the cage. game. The cage. The cage moves up and down. These spikes spin around. And that goes into more of the play, role play aspect of it. Because it doesn't really have anything to do with the game mm -hmm. at that point. You have this sword that you're trying to get. 
Uh, again, you can add rules, but it was just another cool thing that they added to it that they didn't have to. I didn't see this season of Ninjago. Have you? I have, yes. So did this season have any gameplay oh, oh. or roleplay element to it at all? No, I think it was just the crazy wacky adventures of the Ninjago boys. So they made this as a board game just because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there was like a scene where this like castle was an element to it. If I'm remembering correctly, I may be getting my seasons mixed up. So when you get to the sword, it opens up. Or it can pinch Jillian's cheeks. <laughs> really, really cool. But you're right. It is just Hiroko. There's a heart over here. You can So you can get yeah, a heart lives. back. Um, the potions. Uh, there's no potions. Uh, there is a spring green fish. That's nice. So What does that do? You can't actually go there. It's just for decoration. But you could make that up. You could make it as... Add a rule. Add a rule. Of course, the... Skull Emperor is hanging out there. I've got him have, with a bat wing sticking out of his skull. <laughs> You've got a couple of these resurrected guards. But yeah, the whole game's done with no words. And you can connect the different sets. So like, so cool. this one is from a different set I have. This one is from a different set from this theme. And this one connects too, so you can make the game longer and go different paths and stuff. Oh, I love it. It's really neat looking. Yeah. Like, it looks really good. It's a beautiful display piece. It has action. It has the minifigures. It has everything. So, not much else to say about it. Uh, Other than it's cool. It's, it's great. Yeah, as a game, anyway. As a game, there's not much else. People have said for a long time that board games are dead and that video games are the wave of the future. People have said that about physical toys, too. Uh, Kyle and I are old at this point. I think we're officially old. So, we've heard it a lot. That physical toys, plastics going away. I think the s former CEO of Hasbro said there's no future in petroleum-based plastic and toys anymore. I remember mm -hmm. in the it's 80s bad. when the video games came out, the physical toys were freaking out because they were like, oh, you know, their sales plummeted as video game sales went up. And then there was another, I think in the early, late 90s, early 2000s, we heard that again. Physical toys are going away. It's video games all the way. And yet today, Lego is the most popular toy yes. company in the world. Uh, Hasbro is doing really well. Board games have come back and made a resurgence. We're in like a second golden age. Yeah, this of is board this games. is definitely the golden age of board games. Like if you factor in all the everything with Kickstarter and oh, how yeah. much those people make, and there, there's these designer games. Like the big companies don't make a ton of games. Uh, they're still making. Clue and Monopoly and da 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 da. But if you look at just what these small independent kind of designer board games, uh, there's a lot of them. And they make a ton of fantastic, wonderful, high quality games. So, what do you guys think? Why do you think that video games will never replace? Or do you think video games will, like, they especially never, we're but... going on to VR now uh... and things like that? Will games ever replace physical toys or board games? No, they will never. Well, like, will they become pop more popular in sales? Maybe and probably. But will a board game ever truly die? The answer is no. At the end of the day, there's going to be situations where you can't play video games. You're going to have power outages. You're going to have pandemics. You're going to have times where you can't physically get to the electronics. So what are you going to have left? Mm -hmm. Just sit there? No, you have a perfectly good board game in a box. Go dust that off and play it. So, for me, I think why board games will never go away and why they are so different from video games is that they're a social, there's a social aspect yeah. with sitting around live people at a table that even on these live games, I'm blanking on the term, but terms where you're a team and you can actually chat, live chat as you're going oh, to do this play, thing. To yeah. Group play type, like Fortnite and all, and Minecraft, Minecraft can do that. It's not the same it's as not. sitting there with other people and having a good time either competing or playing uh, cooperatively. Yeah, and like people are going to argue saying, oh, well you can have like giant Minecraft parties where everyone brings their laptop, everyone's on their laptop. Yeah. Everyone's on their own screen. Yeah, we played Among Us kind of in that situation. Yes. And I actually got bored with it. It's not the same as seeing a thing yeah. in front of you and physically moving. It just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. And it's hard to explain. Video games are great. I think they definitely have their purpose there. They do. Um, but I don't think 
they'll replace board games. And we're seeing that, like you said, we're seeing that now. Board games are super popular, yeah. maybe more popular than they've ever been. And collecting toys, uh, action figures and stuff like that, is also super popular. Oh, yeah. That's never going to die out. Yeah. And a, a lot of the collecting, I think, is bleeding into the nostalgia. Our, our gener- Oh, were you going to say? Oh, I was, I was just going to make a nerdy, actually, correction. <laughs> um, it wasn't a CEO of Hasbro that said that. It was a former um, property executive. So oh, okay. he had one specific brand he was in charge of. Okay. And he said petroleum products weren't the future. But, you know, Lego's making plastic out of plants now. Mm-hmm. So um, it is getting very expensive to make mm-hmm. toys. Like, I don't know if Lego's feeling that, but, like, if you collect Transformers, Transformers, within the past three years, they've gone up $5. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going on upstairs? Uh, we have some really <laughs> hyper people that work for us. Oh, okay. They get excited when they get... <laughs> yeah. That or the horse? Transformers. No, I just heard a horse. Trans orange. <laughs> yeah. If we were standing if up, we that were would up have there, been yeah. I wouldn't get you guys for Christmas. <laughs> we're just going to get these little tiny boxes yeah. Yeah. full of little. We're like, yeah. It'll be on a ring. It'll be yeah. a diamond yeah. ring. Oh, oh, thank you. I think Lego's feeling the crunch of that. Why is. I don't think so. Has Plast- their stuff oh. gone up? It's still hovering around 10 cents per part with non-licensed stuff. In fact, Ninjago and I think Friends are the masters of having stuff less than 10 cents per part. Yeah. Uh, Ninjago consistently is the cheapest line. But we love them. Uh, 10 (laughs) cents per part wise. Yeah. uh, Price per part wise. Although they are including a lot more smaller, cheaper parts now. So that... The 10 cents per part is kind of hard to gauge Mm -hmm. now. But anyway. I was watching another Lego far inferior channel, YouTube channel. Yes. And uh, he was mentioning that sets have actually gotten cheaper from Lego. Like if you look at just the price, and he was doing specific um, apples to apples comparison. He did, this is a set years ago that was a firehouse set. And he said... Now, the firehouse set, he was judging to a current firehouse set, and he said, this one has more pieces, and they're the same price. And they're still constantly coming out with new elements and yeah. stuff like that, so it's it's not like they're cheapening out and using old stuff mm-hmm. constantly. Why is petroleum-based plastic getting more expensive? I think it's just the cost of it. All the easy stuff, that like oil to get out of the ground... All the easy stuff has already been gotten. And with more regulations mm-hmm. constantly being more put regulations. on it. Mm-hmm. So it might be artificially being raised. This is interesting that I read. The plant-based plastics that Lego is changing over, chemically, it's not any different. Okay. It's still as bad for the environment. It's still, it's still plastic in every sense of the word. It's just the base component they're making it from okay. is now renewable. And intentionally, the plant-based pieces are... Yeah. Made Almost entirely <laughs> made of plants now. Mm-hmm. The more you know. Yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. So thank you guys <laughs> so much for coming on. I agree with you. I don't think board games will ever go away. Like you were saying, it's they're more popular than they've ever been. I was just going to say, if Lego would redo their game thing, I think they could be super popular. Lego is such a great product, and to, they've had some really good ideas. And they just need to make a little more meat in their games without making them too much more complicated. So you think they should reach out to the game experts? Yeah. And definitely like... Yeah, or just look at what's there. Just get their people to buy a bunch of games, play a bunch of games, and then put those elements together. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. But if they could do something like the Harry Potter game where it it uses very much the Lego element of moving stuff, but at the same time, it's an interesting game mm-hmm. and not make it super simple. Mm-hmm. Where it's... Well, even now, I'm thinking Lego has finally, finally acknowledged that adults buy Lego by having that 18 plus set. They've always had the expert line. Yes. But now they're officially Making acknowledging adults, adults now, mm-hmm. which that's been a big critique of Lego is that they never acknowledged that. And yeah. the community felt kind of ignored or shunned mm-hmm. in a sense. And now that they've officially acknowledged that, I think bringing that over to the games mm-hmm. would be amazing if they had 14 oh, yeah. plus yeah. games, uh, 13 plus. Or even just plus. 10 plus. Yeah, 10 plus games. But, I mean, it doesn't look like it, because this is just heroic again. Yeah. But they could, they could. And this, all these heroic games were, I mean, 2013 was when this ended. The chess was an adult game. 
but I don't know if you count that because it's so classic. But yeah, I, I think with the resurgence, now is the time for oh, Lego yes, to bring definitely. back the board game. Mm -hmm. So Campaign, bring back the board game. Hashtag mm -hmm. Lego bring games. The, bring back the board game. Lego games too. Lego That's games. what we need. 2.0. I mean, here, Eroica, the base is there. I think if they change the rules, it could be an awesome game. Yeah, mm -hmm. make it like Hero Quest. Make it like Hero Quest. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just kind of copy Hero Quest. Yeah. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Let us know what other podcast you want to hear us talk about. We're going to continue our Star Wars theme probably once a month. We have Harry Potter 2 to do. What else? We well, got, we're I gonna... mean, we've covered board games now. Is it time to cover Lego video games? <sighs> Should we cover Lego video games? Let I haven't played know. that many. So, like usual, I'll be the idiot in the room <laughs> that just asks questions. Lego Batman is the best Superman game they ever made. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. So, thank you so much. Let us know what you want to hear in the comments and what you want to see from us. We have the experts. We have the product. We have access to old stuff you didn't even know existed. So let us know what you guys want to see. Thank you. And thank you, Kyle, for joining us. Thank you, Jillian. Thanks for having thank me. Once guys. again, yeah. you're welcome. You make me feel just like family. Aw, thanks. <laughs> for the first time in my life. For the first right? time. <laughs> <laughs>